morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are listening. Thank you so very much for making me a part of your day. My name is Lee Parham. You might know me as Lego Lee or Lego Lee 329 from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, you name it. I am all over the internet. And this is the Brickology Podcast, the study of small plastic bricks. How are you doing today? I really hope you are doing well in this still very insane time in our world. And this is the 13th episode of Brickology. 13, obviously, is infamously a very unlucky number. So if this episode just sucks and everything goes completely wrong, I'm blaming it on the number and nothing else. And it already sounds like in my apartment complex, there are like dump trucks going around doing construction work. The people were mowing and somebody was driving a car and it literally sounded like they were drag racing. So there might just be a plethora of background noises and issues with today's episode crossing my fingers that doesn't happen, but lucky number 13 seems to be undefeated at this point, so we'll just have to wait and see how this episode pans out. And we are in full swing of season two for Brickology. Last week was the premiere of season two. I'm super excited about this season, and we are going to continue with the pattern of alternating between a licensed and unlicensed theme. So the premiere of season two last week, if you already haven't listened to that episode, was about Star Wars episode two sets from the Attack of the Clones movie. This week, that means we're going to do an unlicensed licensed Lego theme. So we can kind of just jump into what this week's topic is. And this topic has actually been something I've been meaning to do for a while. The episode I'm about to do was actually legitimately, not even lying about this, originally planned to be the second episode of Brickology. And when I say second, I literally mean Brickology episode two. So the first episode, the pilot episode of Brickology was about Star Wars episode one sets from the Phantom Menace movie. The second episode was going to be what this episode now is. And then tragically that weekend, Kobe Bryant passed away. So I kind of had to rework some things to honor Kobe's memory. So I did that episode about Lego sports instead. And then my schedule got kind of flipped around and messed up. And I ended up pushing this episode back and back and back again and then I kind of forgot about it and then I was just like oh wait I still haven't done that episode and the thing that reminded me ultimately is when I did the 10th episode of Brickology I had a very special fan vote for what theme you wanted me to do that episode about ultimately Lego Atlantis 1 which is what the episode ended up being about the runner-up though to Lego Atlantis in the vote was Lego Power Miners. So there will be a Power Miners episode. However, I don't really think I can accurately do an episode about Power Miners if I don't talk about what this week's theme is first. So you've probably already figured this out, and if you're a big LEGO fan, you definitely know what's going on. And if you've read the title, you obviously know what's going on with this week's episode. The topic for this week is LEGO Rock Raiders, which is kind of like the original LEGO Power Miners. And before I do a Power Miners episode, I want to talk about Rock Raiders. I considered actually kind of grouping them together, but ultimately I think it'd be too many sets for one episode. So we'll just have two maybe slightly shorter episodes of Brickology about these respective themes. And don't worry, Power Miners fans, you're not going to have to wait long to get your Power Miners episode. I'm still going to continue with my alternating pattern between an unlicensed and licensed theme. So next week's episode of Brickology will be a licensed theme, but in two weeks from today, the release of this episode, you will get that Power Miners episode of Brickology, I promise. So Power Miners will be coming here soon, but today, this week's theme is Lego Rock Raiders. So what is Lego Rock Raiders? When did Rock Raiders begin? Well, the theme was first created in the year 1999, so throwback to the 20th century. I I was two years old when this theme came out. I don't have too many memories of this theme at the time because like I said, I was two. I was a very, very small child, but I do have some memories of having like the pieces and figures from this theme from sets that my older brothers definitely got. And this theme consisted of eight main sets, four promotional sets that were all poly bags and three minifig based sets and even an unreleased set. That's kind of a weird conundrum within this theme that we'll talk about later in today's episode. And along with the sets, there is actually a video game that accompanied this theme that was for Windows and the original PlayStation. And the video game actually consisted of a lot of extra material from the storyline of this theme. There were extra monsters, like ice rock monsters, giant bats, big worm creatures that they fought off. There's a lot of extra stuff going on with the video game, and the video game definitely 
really help to expand the lore of this theme that I'll mention here in just a second. Now, I've never played the video game myself. I don't have a PC or an old Windows. I don't have an old PlayStation just lying around and I couldn't find anywhere to play it online. And also, Brickology is about the study of small plastic bricks. We're not talking about the video games based off the of small plastic bricks, so we're not gonna focus any more on the video game, but I have heard pretty legendary things about this video game, especially for its time back in the year 1999. Now, this theme is what LEGO would call a story-based theme, and it's actually only the third theme in LEGO history at the time to have specific named characters. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, before this, like sets like from LEGO Castle or Classic Space, they didn't have named characters. It was just knights and, you know, bad knights or pirates and spacemen, things like that. The first LEGO theme ever to have a bunch of specific named characters was a theme from the mid-90s, I believe it was 1996, called Time Cruisers. Hopefully someday I'll do an episode about Time Cruisers because that theme is crazy. And then the second theme, probably a you know, more known theme, is Adventurers, which started off with an Egypt theme. And that's obviously where Johnny Thunder came from. That is a very famous LEGO theme that we'll definitely be doing an episode of Brick Algae on here in the near future. And the third theme, LEGO ever did with specific named characters was Rock Raiders. And here are the names of the characters. Axel, Bandit, Chief, Docs, Jet, and Sparks. And I was talking to my brother about the names of these characters. He's like, these guys sound like characters from The Matrix, which coincidentally also came out in the year 1999. So that's very interesting. And obviously these are all names that I don't think a lot of people in real life would have the name Bandit or Sparks. I mean, there's definitely like nicknames for that kind of thing, but they're very, you know, unrealistic names, but they add a lot to the characters from this theme. And one of the most interesting things about Rock Raiders, especially for the story, is Rock Raiders, for all intents and purposes, is technically a space theme from Lego. Now, I don't think it's a particularly bold statement to say that space is probably the most iconic original Lego theme out there, and space has tons of different sub-themes. You have the original classic space, things like insectoids, space police, life on Mars, you know, Galaxy Quest, Alien Conquest. There are a lot of sub-themes in space, and Rock Raiders is kind of technically a space sub-theme. Now, Lego does not define it as a space sub-theme. It's not listed on Wikipedia or Brick set as part of a space sub theme, and I was actually completely unaware that this was a space adventure series until I read up on the descriptions on Brickopedia about the plot of Rock Raiders. But Rock Raiders is actually set in outer space. Now, you would have absolutely no idea it was set in outer space if it weren't for the added material from the video game, because the sets themselves are just the rock raiding machines. There are no spaceships or anything. Obviously, there are these rock monsters that we'll talk about later in the episode that, you know, are alien-like, but I thought they were just, you know, you know, earthbound rock monsters and not alien creatures, but this is actually a space theme, and I'm going to read for you the plot description from Wikipedia for Rock Raiders story. Now, I hate reading things. The reason I just I just can't do it. I'm not very good at reading things out loud. People have always asked me, does Brickology have a script? Kind of. I write a pretty extensive amount of show notes that like lets me know what to say and when to say it and in what order to say it, but my show notes are just bullet points and then I ad-lib everything in, in between. I think I'm very good at ad-libbing. I'm not very good at reading things paragraph word for word, so if I mess up and completely butcher this following plot description from Wikipedia about LEGO Rock Raiders, I sincerely apologize, but without further ado, let's try and read this the best I can. The Rock Raiders were traveling on their spaceship, the LMS Explorer, mapping the whole galaxy. They had just finished their journey and were headed home when they drifted into an asteroid field. The ship was badly damaged and, to make matters worse, a wormhole caught the ship in its gravitational pull. The fuel supply was drained in the failed attempt to rescue, and the LM LMS Explorer was flying into a distant galaxy. They found themselves around planet U, a planet rich in mysterious power crystals. They sent down the rock raiders to mine it, and they found vast amounts of energy crystals to power and repair the LMS Explorer. But they also encountered many alien creatures. The team would endure numerous hardships to obtain the crystals, but they eventually triumphed and successfully gathered enough crystals to return home. 
you know what? Someone should assign me to a freaking book deal or something. I could do audio books. Man, that was actually not as terrible as I thought it would. I think I only messed up twice while reading that. So hopefully that sounded pretty good. So yeah, that's the plot description of Rock Raiders. Very interesting. And there is a big spaceship that is seen in the video game, the LMS Explorer. But all the sets are just based off the stuff that actually happens on this planet U. So no spaceships, all the mining vehicles are what we get in the Rock Raider sets. And speaking of these Rock Raider sets, let's talk about them right now. Now, you've probably heard the term one and done. And when it relates to college basketball, it means somebody who comes to college basketball for their freshman year and then they just leave. They're there for one season and then they are done. That's also a term that can relate to Lego. A one and done Lego theme is a theme that has one wave, like Pharaoh's Quest, for example, and then it's done and we never hear from it again. Rock Raiders, especially in America, was a one and done theme. We got one pretty decent sized wave of eight sets and 1999 and that was it. Now, there is a little bit deeper history here because there's some weird promotional sets that are released later on in different countries and we'll talk about those at the end of this episode, but for all intents and purposes, Rock Raiders is a one and done Lego theme with one full wave that was released in July of 1999 with eight different normal box sets. The first set we're gonna talk about was called the Hover Scout. It was $3 with 40 pieces. It was a small little command station with a tool rack and then this thing called the Hover Scout. And this is something I'm gonna mention a lot throughout this episode because this kind of little vehicle appears in quite a few Power Miner sets. And it was a very unique vehicle. It's a small little hovercraft type thing. And the piece it was used is that piece they use commonly for like walker feet from Lego Star Wars sets. I believe it's like a six by six piece, but it's very, very odd shape. It's hard to describe this piece, especially in an audio podcast with no visual accompanying. So very strange piece that is used to build this hover scout. And it's used a lot throughout this theme. It's not the last time you're gonna hear me mention it in today's episode. And this set included the character Jet. It was $3. It was an impulse buy set, very, very small. It looked, you know, kind of decent. The vehicle didn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever, it was still a pretty solid little set. For a whole dollar more at $4 was the Rapid Rider that had 39 pieces. So it cost $1 more, but it actually had one less piece. And the Rapid Rider here, the vehicle made a little bit more sense. It actually used the helicopter landing gear, the, like the landing skids piece to create this small little sled that could transport rocks and crystals. And this is the first set that introduces us to the new bolt older piece made for Rock Raiders at Lego. They don't exactly use this piece today. They kind of remolded it and made it a little bit, you know, more modern, but a very similar concept of piece is still used today. It was a piece that's actually two pieces. You could kind of pinch it in the middle and it was hollow on the inside. So it made this boulder and you could actually fit things on the inside, like the energy crystals from the set. And this was a pretty cool little set. It had a small little bucket at the back to hold the boulder. It made a lot of sense. Really cool, small impulse build. And I definitely think a better set than the Hover Scout. And this one included the character Bandit. Now for $2 more, with only seven more pieces, was the $6 set called the Rock Raiders with 46 pieces. This set is an anomaly. Anomaly? <laughs> anomaly <laughs> in Lego history. Such an interesting and pretty epic set, if you ask me. It included a small tools rack and a little saw that one of the figures could hold. And it had five, I'm serious, five Mini figures in this set. It included all of the Rock Raiders besides one chief who was exclusive to the biggest set from this line. Essentially, it was a battle pack, and you got five named Rock Raiders characters for six bucks. Six dollars. That means just slightly over one dollar. One dollar and twenty cents if you round up for each individual minifigure. Plus, you get some accessories on the side. What a Deal. A minifigure pack nowadays costs five dollars by itself. They're probably gonna be six dollars in a few years because Lego keeps raising the price on these things. This is such an incredible deal and such a strange thing in the history of Lego because Lego usually loves to really spread all the main characters throughout the sets. You know, you can't get all the main characters in one set. Like if it's for Ninjago or something, maybe all the main characters come in one big set. But if you want to collect all of the ninja from the Ninjago sets, you gotta buy a bunch of different sets. 
sets, but that was not the case with Rock Raiders. You could get all but one of the main characters from Rock Raiders in this $6 set. That is something truly special that we just don't ever see from LEGO. That is an absolutely insane thing. This is a great set. This set stands out to me in the history of LEGO sets. It's one of the, you know, earlier examples of a battle pack. What an awesome little figure pack this set was. So we're already three sets deep into the history of Rock Raiders, and those sets I would say are all pretty much impulse sets. Very, very small sets. The rest of the sets here for the main box sets from the original Wave of Rock Raiders are all bigger, more substantial sets. The first one we'll talk about here is the $15 109-piece Granite Grinder. Now this was a mech type build. It had two legs and a very big drill at the front. It had a mechanism where the drill could spin, the legs could kind of move back and forth. But this set here, I think most importantly, is the smallest set to introduce us to a lot of these very interesting Rock Raiders pieces. First up, we got a shiny and chrome drill piece. They have since remade the drill piece to be a little more industrial looking and the less shiny chrome, but this drill piece one was a very fine looking drill and it was super shiny. Like, I mean, seriously, like original lightsaber blades level of shiny chrome, a very cool drill piece. But I think the even more interesting piece is what I would call the Rock Raiders canopy, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this canopy has like ever been used on any other Lego theme ever. It's such an odd canopy piece. It's brown, it's open air, it has, it looks, you know, very like roll cagey metal bars, and it has a very steampunk type feel to it. It's a really interesting canopy piece that is seen on a fair number of these Rock Raiders sets, and I think it's super cool, and I'd love to see LEGO use it again on something, but I don't think they ever have. Correct me if I'm wrong again about that, but it's just a very unique and interesting Rock Raiders canopy piece. And that kind of segues into, you know, mentioning that that canopy was brown, we can kind of talk about now the color scheme for LEGO Rock Raiders because it was a weird one to say the least. There was a lot of light and dark gray, which is, you know, pretty normal. And then we had the aforementioned brown, but then the accent colors are where things start to get very weird. We had yellow, which, you know, is fairly normal. And then teal. We had a lot of teal on these Rock Raiders sets, and that is significant because the teal color was actually discontinued for almost two decades from LEGO. Up until the Downtown Diner from the Creator Expert Modular Building series was released a few years ago, teal was like never seen again in LEGO sets for a very long time, but back in 1999, the Rock Raiders sets had a lot of very unique teal pieces, and it made for a very interesting and striking color scheme. I'm not sure I would say it's my favorite color scheme in the world, but in some ways, it actually works pretty well. There might be one too many colors, but I think it's pretty visually appealing and it definitely makes the vehicles look better than I think they would have if they hadn't added the teal because the rest of the colors are very industrial looking, which is, you know, what you'd probably expect from mining vehicles, but throwing those little flashes of teal here and there definitely helped add to kind of this weird feeling and, you know, kind of a spaceshipy feeling, sci-fi feeling for these Rock Raider sets. So that is a very interesting thing about these sets. Additionally, this set also introduced, to, introduced us to the first ever Lego Dynamite piece, which wasn't even a piece. It was literally a two by one printed tile with a stick of dynamite on it. Since then, actually in Power Miners that we'll talk about in two weeks, they introduced us to a piece that's actually supposed to be dynamite, but this one actually just had a printed dynamite piece instead. Finally, this set included the character Axel. So that is the $15 granite grinder set. For $20 from this wave, with actually less pieces, only 90 pieces in this $20 set, so uh-oh, bad price or piece on this one, we had the Loader Dozer. If you were ranking all the Rock Raider sets in terms of realism, which obviously isn't something that really matters when you have giant rock monsters and alien planets and wormholes and all that stuff, but in terms of realism, I would say the Loader Dozer is the one that most resembles like an actual thing that exists in real life. It's just a medium-sized loader with a big shovel and some big wheels. It's still used, that Rock Raiders canopy piece I mentioned, but nothing really that crazy about this set. It's just a loader. Pretty cool set, big loader thing. It also included the character Axel, again. So he actually comes in two back-to-back -back sets here, and the one thing about this set, I think that made this set special, definitely made this set expensive for its price or piece, is that it also included the Rock 
Monster. Now, the Rock Monster is very interesting. It only came in two of these Rock Raider sets. It's all one color. The pieces, it's one big piece all in one color. It's just brown. It looks very odd, if you ask me, but definitely, you know, looks like a Rock Monster. The left arm could rotate around 360 degrees. It couldn't throw the crystals like the Power Miners Rock Monsters, but it could hold on to the crystals. But I think the most significant thing about this Rock Monster it's the first ever Lego Big Fig. It seems like we get Big Figs now from, you know, so many different themes like Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Ninjago, you name it. But this is the first ever Lego Big Fig. Whenever you see a new Lego Big Fig, you know, even from a new theme coming out like Monkey Kid or something, think about this rock monster because this rock monster paved the way for all future Lego Big Fig endeavors. And it's a very cool piece. It's a very nice looking piece, especially for its time. And it definitely, you know, helped add to the value of this Loader Dozer set. And you know when I mentioned that there was a weird unreleased set from Rock Raiders? Well, it's the Loader Dozer is the unreleased set. And you're probably like, wait, wait a second. How is this set unreleased if you just described it perfectly? Well, here's the thing. The set we're talking about, or we did just talk about, I don't mean, normally don't mention set numbers in this podcast because I think they're kind of useless and no one really cares that much about set numbers. But the original set number of this set was 4950. Now, there actually was a set also titled 4950 nine instead of zero, which is a new set number that was actually advertised in Lego catalogs, but was never released. Now, the weird thing here is this never released set was literally the exact same thing as the Loader Dozer. Piece for piece, the exact same set. My theory is someone literally was typing out the set number in this catalog, and instead of clicking on zero, they clicked on nine. Because look at your keyboard right now, zero and nine are right next to each other. I literally just think this is a typo, but Brickset and Brickopedia both kind of report on this as a weird, unreleased Rock Crater set that's actually just the same as a normal set. Very strange thing. There's not really any other examples of this in LEGO's history, at least to my knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but very odd thing that there's just, you know, a mess up on the set number of this set. For $10 more at $30 and 168 pieces, we had the Chrome Crusher. This is the biggest ground vehicle from the Rock Raiders theme, and this vehicle is hard to describe. You got four big wheels, a big canopy, that same Rock Raiders piece that we've already mentioned, extra storage space in the middle for tools and some controls, and at the front you had a drill, you know, which is pretty normal for the Rock Raiders theme, and then there was like this weird radar dish looking thing that I'm not entirely sure what it does, because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to have a radar dish position like this one is on the front so I'm guessing this radar dish might be some kind of weird like sonic boom cannon technology but I couldn't really find any additional information about it online so that's just a weird theory of mine also though at the back it is equipped with a giant laser <laughs> I'm serious there was a big laser piece and this is one of the first ever Lego light brick pieces and it's a very specialized light brick piece it's a big piece that actually kind of acts as as a real laser pointer. You push a button on the top and it does actually create a laser and they put a lightsaber blade piece in there to kind of help magnify the trajectory of this laser itself. Very weird and very strange that this set would have a drill, this satellite dish thing that might be a sonic boom cannon of some kind, and then a laser. So this one really packs a lot of punch for a Rock Raiders vehicle. Additionally, it also includes a bucket piece at the back, a big bucket piece to store other things in. Now, I don't really know how this vehicle would get rocks into the bucket piece because it doesn't have a shovel, so I guess you have to buy like the Loader Dozer or other smaller or the bigger Rock Raider sets to actually put rocks into this vehicle for it to actually make sense, but I just thought that was something worth mentioning. And you'll never guess what figure was included with this set. Axel. <laughs> Axel has now come in three straight Rock Raider sets. I'm not entirely sure why the man was so popular with Lego. I mean, they had a bunch of other characters, but they're just like, nope, we're just going to throw in Axel in this set as well, which I find very interesting. Now we can move into the two biggest sets from the Lego Rock Raiders theme. For $50, with 351 pieces, we had the Tunnel Transport, and this was a flying 
vehicle. It's the biggest vehicle for the Rock Raiders theme, and it's a helicopter-like ship with four rotors in the middle. And the rotors they used are the rotors they still use to this day, normally like on the front of biplanes. They're very small. They are very, very small rotor pieces. And I have absolutely no clue how Lego, like physically, conceptually, saw this vehicle flying. It makes no sense to me because the vehicle is pretty large and the rotors are very small and they're only in the middle of this vehicle. So aerodynamically, I don't think this vehicle makes any sense. Now, of course, it's a sci-fi toy. That's probably not Lego's biggest concern, but as an adult fan of Lego now, that's definitely something that bothers me more than it probably should. All in all, though, I think this vehicle is just kind of whack looking. It's a really strange looking vehicle. I just don't quite understand the shape of it. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, it just looks really weird. And having a helicopter just seems like weird technology for this theme, because we've already established that this theme has has hovercrafts. There are vehicles that can hover. Why would you need something powered by rotors if you have hovercraft technology and you obviously also have big spaceship technology? It seems rather archaic to have a helicopter within this theme. So I don't think this vehicle really makes any sense, but this vehicle did have some pretty cool play features. You could deploy a couple of smaller vehicles, including a little hovercraft rover, and you also had a small little rover thing with a shovel, which was pretty nice. And this vehicle also had an additional bucket piece like the one we just mentioned in the last set, but this one had a magnet. It was pretty cool. You could actually kind of, this was like a drop ship of sorts. You could use the magnet to pick up the bucket piece. So that was actually a very cool play feature. And what figure does it include? You might guess Axe. Just kidding. Doesn't include Axel. You get Docks and Jet. So actually different Power Miners characters, which is nice to see. So it's an interesting set to say the least. I think it's kind of a whack set if you ask me, but it has some very interesting things going for it. And that leads us into the biggest Rock Raiders set, which my family definitely did own because I have all these pieces in my collection. And that is the Rock Raiders Headquarters HQ. This was a big boy, $80 but only had 406 pieces. And you can probably see throughout this theme, the price for pieces are not good because these sets come with so many larger than life Lego pieces. And you'll see that continued on to Power Miners when I talk about that theme here in a couple of weeks. And my family had this set. My brother got this set. The story he told me is that he found this set at Walmart with a very damaged box. It was actually on clearance for like $35. So he got it for more than 50% off, which is a pretty hype deal. Of course, this is the biggest set of the line, and it's built on a giant base plate piece with four different sections. Now, some of you newer LEGO fans might be completely unaware of this big base plate piece. It's a gigantic piece, a really huge base plate piece, and they used it for so, so many different LEGO themes. It's mostly known for its appearances in themes like LEGO Castle, but it's definitely been seen in themes like Alpha Team and others. It's a really big LEGO piece that has been discontinued for a while now, but I have a lot of nostalgia around the build of this piece and it's built it's kind of like built and displayed and broken up into four different sections and they had these eight by eight bricks not not plates, bricks, that you could kind of lift and put into those different sections. And it was kind of modular. It was actually a cool play feature. You could kind of mix around the way that you displayed this. And they had a bigger section that went into the middle. And there was a really fun play feature. It was essentially like an assembly line of play features with the crane that can pick up the boulders. And then to put them onto this conveyor belt that then would drop them into a the back of a tipper truck. Really cool stuff, really cool little train of events for a play feature that is something we've seen in LEGO before, but it's always super fun to play with things like that. It also included that laser piece. That's the reason I know we have this set because I definitely have that laser piece in my collection. And you got another small Hover Scout like vehicle. And the minifigures included with this set here were Docks, Jet, and Sparks, and then the exclusive Chiefs minifigure. So one of the Rock Raiders, you know, the leader of the Rock Raiders himself, who is, you know, ironically just named Chief, is included with this set and actually exclusive to this set. And it, this set also included the Rock Monster Big Fig, which is the exact same piece as the one that came with the Loader Dozer. Now, this set was voted on by my fans on Instagram as the best 
Rock Raiders set. Now, normally when I throw up these questions, what's the best set from this theme? I get dozens of responses. I got like five responses for the Rock Raiders one. I'm guessing because a lot of my fans are, you know, probably skewing a little bit younger than me and might be completely unaware of what Rock Raiders is. So hopefully this episode of Brickology informs you a lot on what Rock Raiders is. But the ones who did voted voted this as the best Rock Raiders set. In my opinion, I can't really disagree. It's a really fun, really cool set. You know, I do like vehicles a little bit more than play sets, but I think this one makes sense and I have absolutely no qualms with this being voted as the best Rock Raiders set. Now, those are all eight of the Rock Raiders sets that were released in America and came in normal Lego boxes. However, there are a few more Rock Raiders sets we need to talk about, but they're kind of weird and extremely unique. Now raise your hands if you've heard of Kabaya Sweets. No, nobody? Crickets chirping? Yeah, I hadn't either. Kabaya Sweets is a company from Japan. Now, I had been to Japan and I actually recognized the packaging of this company, but I couldn't read the name because, you know, it's in Japanese characters and not English words. But Kabaya Sweets is a Japanese candy company. And included with some Kabaya Sweets stuff in the year 2000, they actually included small little Rock Raiders promotional poly bag sets. There were four of them. One was called the Light hover. It had 25 pieces and it's like the fifth time we've seen this little hovercraft vehicle from this theme and it included the jet minifigure. The second one was the chainsaw buzzer. 22 pieces, small four-wheel vehicle that had saw blades in the front and it had bandit. The third one, probably the weirdest and worst one that just makes no sense again, is another helicopter. This was called the helicopter transport that also had 22 pieces and this was a really weird build because it was like a seat that had a rotor blade just right behind the minifigure's head, which just doesn't really make any sense, and I'm not really sure how that would fly, but, you know, getting physics and, you know, aerodynamics out of the way, it's this weird little helicopter transport that included the figure dock. And then finally, we had the drill craft, which was probably the best of these small little sets. It had 27 pieces. It was a hovering vehicle again, but this hovering vehicle had two saw blades at the front and the figure sparks was included. Weird sets that weren't available in America. They literally came in Kabaya Suites in Japan. Very strange. Very, very strange. They're all tiny and all extremely similar to things that were bigger and better in the actual Rock Raider sets. And there's no exclusive minifigures or anything. So I don't really think, you know, people People are too bummed they couldn't get these sets but if you're like a hardcore completionist and you want to complete every Rock Raider set ever it is gonna be kind of annoying to you know not be able to get these speaking of sets you won't be able to get in America there were three minifigure pack sets released for Rock Raiders in the year 2000 now if you've listened to the aforementioned episode episode 2 of Brickology about Lego sports I talked about in the Lego sports line they had minifigure packs for those it was like a little box that came with three sports minifigures a display stand and a card. Now, it makes sense to do that for sports characters or figures or, you know, athletes in real life, but they actually did it for other themes, including themes like Star Wars. Actually, I remember having one from Star Wars, I think that came with Chewbacca and two scout troopers. Like, very interesting things. They were $6. However, these ones were never released in America, and there were three packs released in the year 2000, and they were a limited release in the United Kingdom, and you could get them at Legoland Windsor, which I've actually been to, but um, back in 2006 with that was, you know, well after Rock Raiders had been discontinued. So weird thing here, and there were three different packs. Rock Raiders number one, very original name, came with one minifigure and that was Chief. So if you're in the United Kingdom, you don't have to buy the big set anymore to get the Chief minifigure. The next set, guess the name with me, it's Rock Raiders number two, came with three minifigures, Bandit, Docks, and Sparks. Very self-explanatory. And what's the third one called? That's right, Rock Raiders number three came with Axel, who's, you know, coming a lot of these sets, Jet, and then Docks. Now, Docks did come in two of these sets, but I can confirm he is different. He has a different costume in the two different sets, which is nice to not just have the same exact minifigure in the same kind of set. That would be kind of annoying. But there you go. That's the Rock Raiders minifigure packs, and that concludes it us for all of the Rock Raiders sets, all 15 Rock 
Raiders set, and we never received a second official wave. Power Miners, which will be the episode here in a couple of weeks, did receive a couple of follow-up waves, but Rock Raiders was just a one-and-done theme in America with a couple of weird promotional things internationally, and it's a very interesting thing. It's a very cool theme that I think a lot of people have tons of nostalgia wrapped around, and I really appreciate Rock Raiders for just being original and different and very unique in the overall arc overarching history of LEGO and its original theme. So thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode of Brickologies. Next week's episode, I won't reveal it now, but it will be a licensed theme and then Power Miners will be here in a couple of weeks, although I might be going on a small trip. So Power Miners at the very least will be in three weeks, but hopefully in just two weeks, I'll keep you updated on that and find Brickology online. You can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or watch it on YouTube, but also Legoly329. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and most importantly, I'd say I'm on Instagram, my Instagram page. I literally post daily content over there. And if you really love me, which you should because I'm great, obviously, right? Very, you know, I'm humble right there. Find me on Patreon. I only have like five Patreon supporters and I really appreciate my patrons, but it'd be cool to get more. And it just really like literally a dollar a month helps fund the mission that is this account. Every little bit helps contribute to building Brickology and making all these cool posts. So if you really like Lego Lee, go on Patreon and support me. So thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace out. Bye-bye.